Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on work and energy. The topic of this video is work energy bar charts, and we want to know what type of information does a work energy bar chart convey, and how do you construct work energy bar charts? I'm uh, Mr. H. Let's get started. One recurring theme in these videos is that whatever energy is, it's something that we can keep track of. We can know the amount of energy, the form of energy, and the manner in which the amount and the form change over the course of time. An energy bar chart is a conceptual tool that communicates these very things. It shows the amount of energy, the form that energy is in, and how the amount and form change between the initial and the final state of motion for that object. A vertical bar is used to indicate the amount of energy. A large bar indicates a large amount of energy and a short bar a small amount of energy. But rather than a single bar, we'd like to have a set of bars, one to show kinetic energy, one to show potential energy, and one to show the work done by non-conservative forces. The work done by non-conservative forces could be positive or negative, depending on whether energy is inputted into the system or removed from the system. But rather having a set of bars, we'd like to have two set of bars, one for the initial state and one for the final state. And once you've finished filling it all in, you have spoken in bar charties what has happened to the form and the amount of energy over the course of time. Here are two previous videos in this tutorial series. They're recommended viewing prior to watching this video, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. In the video on your left, External Energy Transfers, we discussed a unique situation in which work was done by non-conservative forces to change the total amount of mechanical energy of the system. In such cases, there's a WNC term, work done by forces other than gravity and spring, and the initial amount of mechanical energy is not equal to the final amount of mechanical mechanical energy, the work term makes up the difference. In the video on your right, Mechanical Energy Conservation, we discuss situations in which there was no work done by non-conservative forces, and the initial amount of mechanical energy, kinetic plus potential, is equal to the final amount of mechanical energy, initial plus potential. In a work energy bar chart, we use a vertical bar to represent each term in these two equations. For the case on your left, in which work is done, there will be a work bar there, and for the case on the right, in which there's no work done, you won't see a work bar. But what's true of each case is if you begin to count up the heights of the bars on the left and the right side of the bar chart, you'll note they're equal. For instance, on the left, we have 5 units of kinetic, 3 units of potential, and negative 2 units of work, which add up to 6 units. And on the right side is 2 units of kinetic plus 4 potential, and that also adds up to 6. In a work energy bar chart, there's always an equality between the terms on the left and the terms on the right. How do you construct work energy bar charts? The process begins by analyzing the initial and final state of the object to determine the presence or absence of the two forms of mechanical energy. The second step is consider the forces that are acting up on the system and determine whether any work is done by non-conservative forces and determine whether or not that work is positive or negative. Finally, begin constructing bars on the bar chart to represent these forms of energy, the presence or absence of kinetic and potential and of work done by non-conservative forces. The exact heights of the bars is not important. What is important is that the sum of the heights of the bars on the left side of the bar chart is equal to the sum of the heights of the bars on the right side of the bar chart. In the next three examples, I'm going to demonstrate the use of this three-step method. In the first example, starting from rest, a ball falls from the top of a pillar to the ground below. Ignore air resistance. The first step is determine the presence or absence of the forms of energy, initial and final state. So in the initial state, the ball is on top of a pillar at rest. No kinetic, but it has potential energy. In the final state, the ball is just a picometer above the ground, but it's moving pretty fast. So it has kinetic energy, but only only a picojoule or zero joules of potential energy. Is work done by non-conservative forces? No, the only force doing work is the force of gravity and it's a conservative force. Now I get to the business of constructing the bars. And as I construct the bars, I'm going to begin on the left side and I'm going to show zero kinetic and zero work but a lot of potential. Now, how much potential is entirely up to you. The exact height is not important, but only that you balance the left and the right side of the bar chart. So I'm going to show five units of potential energy on the left side, such that the sum of the bars on the left side of the chart is five units. So on the right side, I also have to have five units, and it's all kinetic in the final state. 
In example 2, a car skids from a high speed to a stop across a level highway with its brake supply. When I consider the initial energy of the car, it's moving so it has kinetic energy, but the cars on the ground has zero height and no potential energy. In the final state, there's still no potential energy. The car's on the ground, it's level ground, and there's no kinetic energy because the car is finally stopped. Now when I consider the work done by non-conservative forces, I say yes, friction does work, and it acts opposite the direction of motion and does negative work, thus removing mechanical energy from the car. Now when I get around to the business of filling in the bar charts, I'm going to begin with the easy part first, which is the final state. There's no energy for this car, no kinetic, no potential, so I mark zero and zero. Now when I sum up the bar heights on the right side, they sum to zero. Now on the left side, they have to be zero as well. And there's only two bars on the left side. It's kinetic and work. And so I'm going to show five units of kinetic and negative five units of work. And when I've done, I've balanced out the height of the bars on the initial state and the height of the bars in the final state. In the third example, a skydiver falls with constant speed from a thousand foot elevation to just above the ground. When I do my initial final energy analysis, I'm going to start with the initial state. And I'm going to say the skydiver has kinetic energy and potential energy because it's moving and it has height. And in the final state, it's still moving, in fact, with the same speed. And it has kinetic energy, but it's just a little bit above the ground, so no potential energy. Now when it comes to the work done by non-conservative forces, forces other than gravity and spring forces, I have to consider the constant speed motion of the skydiver. There's a force downwards on the skydiver. That's a conservative force, gravity. So something must balance that, and it would be the air resistance upwards on the skydiver and parachute. And so that upwards force is a non-conservative force. It goes opposite the direction of motion. So that's negative work being done on the skydiver. Now when it comes to filling out the bar chart, I'm going to begin with the easy part first, which is the kinetic energy. It's the same on the left side as on the right side. I'm going to choose two units of bar height for the kinetic. Totally arbitrary, as long as you have the same amount on the initial state as in the final state to demonstrate that constant speed. And I'm going to show zero units of height or potential energy on the final state. Now I have one last thing to do, the potential energy initially and the work done. And I have to remember that the sum of the heights on the left side of the bar chart equal the sum of the heights on the right side. And in order to do that, I have to have the same amount of potential going up as work going down. And so I choose five units of potential energy and negative five units of work. And when I'm done, if I sum up the two plus positive five plus negative five units of bars on the left side, it equals the two units units of bars on the right side. This bar chart is often used when we wish to conduct an energy analysis for a variety of locations, not just the initial and the final state. One thing you'll notice is that the total amount of mechanical energy bar in these bar charts is always equal to the Ke plus the Pe bar at every location. Another thing that's important here is that it's the relative height of the Pe and the Ke bar that's important as you read the bars from left to right. For instance, in this case, we notice the Pe bars is going down from A to B to C to D, but the Ke bars are going up from A to B to C to D, indicating that the object is losing height and gaining speed. Finally, you'll notice that there's no W and C terms in these bar charts, but if there were W and C, what you would notice is that the total mechanical energy would either be increasing or decreasing. In my fourth example, I'm going to do a multi-location bar chart for a roller coaster car moving along a track with five locations shown on the diagram. It says assume negligible resistance forces, like no, ear, no friction or ear resistance. The only other force acting on a roller coaster car is the normal force, and I know that that acts perpendicular to the direction that the car moves at all locations along the track. So normal force, a non-conservative force, does not do any work, and the only work being done here is being done by gravity. Gravity. So when I go to do the bar chart, I know that the total mechanical energy will be the same at all locations, so I'm going to fill that in first, and I've arbitrarily chosen five units of height for the TME. The second thing I'm going to do is show how the potential energy is changing. So if I look at the roller coaster diagram from A to B to C to D, there's decreases in height, which would mean decreases in potential energy. I'm going to assume initially there's no kinetic energy, so all the energy is potential energy. But as I go to B, there'll be less of it. When I get to C, there'll be still less of it. And when I get to D, there'll be none of it. And at E, 
we're back with a little bit of potential energy. Now for kinetic energy, I've assumed that it started with zero joules of kinetic energy. When it gets to B, it will have speeded up and there'll be enough kinetic energy such that the Ke plus the Pe bar height will be equal to the total. So that's two and a half and two and a half. When I get to location C, there's about one and a half units of potential. So I'm going to show about three and a half units of kinetic to sum up to the five for the total. When I get to location D, it's all kinetic energy. And when I'm up to location E, there's about a half unit of potential. So I'm going to go with four and a half units of kinetic to give me a total energy of five units. In my fifth and final bar chart example, I'm going to use a four location bar chart for a pendulum that swings to and fro, starting from rest at location A and swinging back and forth. I'm going to begin by doing the total mechanical energy bar. I have to determine whether it's going to be constant or changing. The only forces acting upon this pendulum bob are the force of gravity, a conservative force, and the tension force. But tension acts perpendicular to the direction of motion at all locations along this circular arc, and so it does no work upon the pendulum bob. The total mechanical energy will be conserved, and I've chosen five units of bar heights for the total mechanical energy. Now I'm going to begin with the potential. In location A, there's no kinetic, so all of the energy's potential energy. I'm going to go with five units of, of potential energy. When I get to location B, there'll be less potential energy because it's dropped a little bit. And in location C, it's the lowest location, so I'm just going to show zero units for the lowest location, no height at that location. And then it rises back up to location D. Now I'm going to do the kinetic energy, paying attention to the idea that PE plus KE is equal to the total. The total is 5 units, so in location A, there's 5 units of PE, no kinetic. In location B, I have about 3 units of potential energy, so I need about 2 units of kinetic energy. At location C, there's no potential, so all the energy is kinetic. And at location D, I have about 1 unit of potential energy, so I need 4 units of kinetic energy in order to have a total of 5. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a physics interactive activity that's really good. You have a Minds on Physics mission, which I'm particularly fond of of the four that's listed here, and you have a match that bar chart from the concept builder section. All three of these involve great practice. And finally, there's a tutorial page that lets you brush up on what you've been learning. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.